This video is about rewriting your story so that you can actually let go of control and embody the original frequency of who you really are. And in this particular case, we're going to focus on how to naturally embody your feminine energy. I'm sure you've heard about the importance of embodiment. And there's lots of people who are talking about nervous system regulation right now, which is so freaking awesome. Look at everybody learning and growing. This is just so awesome. I love that these are becoming popular terms that everyone is getting educated on. But did you know that your body is your subconscious? Your body is your subconscious. You're not a mind living in a body as if like your mind is this invisible thing that lives in this kind of a car that you drive. It just doesn't work that way. Your body is your subconscious. So if you have stories in your subconscious mind, meaning limiting beliefs, uh, conditioned worldviews, triggers, trauma, all of these things that kind of come up at the worst times, if they live in your subconscious mind, guess where else they live? That's right. Your issues are in the tissues. And that's really good news because if there's something going on with you physically, the easiest way to change it is through the story that you tell, because the story you tell becomes the life you live. That's why I created the living narrative. If you're new here, I'm Soul, and I'm really passionate about helping people transform their stories. So I'm here to show you how to do the inner work. And by inner work, I don't mean doing endless affirmations and breath work and yoga. Even meditation isn't the most efficient way for the average person to do the work. These are all really, really wonderful things, but I'm all about minimum effective dose. I like maximal results with minimum effective dose. And in order to do that, you have to deconstruct the stories that you tell yourself, most of which are on an unconscious level. It's this conditional thinking that keeps you trapped in the paradigm that you're trying to change. Whether you're struggling physically, something in your body, gut issues, something happening with your skin, your weight, or you just get anxiety, or you're afraid of trying new things or moving forward in your life or ending a relationship or for, you know, um, making more money or whatever's going on. You live in a paradigm and you've got a bunch of conditioned beliefs in your subconscious mind and they live in your body because your body is your subconscious mind. Every single time I have had a massive breakthrough in my life, I have seen the physical results that have followed after I've changed my story. What do I mean by that? So I've been practicing yoga basically my entire life. I did my first yoga teacher training when I was like 17 and I have had periods of practicing regularly, daily, not practicing at all for almost months on end, and everything in between. I've never really been a very disciplined person, but I've gone through little spurts, especially in the teacher trainings that I've done. And what I've noticed is that anytime I've had an opening in my body, in my breath, in my voice, in my flexibility, it's always come following a deeper understanding of my personal journey and understanding who I am and what is happening in my subconscious and then rewriting my story. So I'll give you an example. I used to be ashamed of my past. I grew up with a single mom and it was really tough at times. We didn't have a lot of money. I remember I couldn't even keep doing dance lessons because we didn't have enough money to keep paying for it. We moved constantly. I went to so many different schools. I was bullied by other kids and I just generally felt unsafe. On top of that, my mom always worked really hard and did the best she could for my brother and I. But as you can imagine, I didn't have a lot of discipline. And my mom always just wanted to have fun with us whenever we could. So I grew up kind of doing whatever I wanted, which was really cool and awesome. But at the same time, I didn't have the discipline that I really needed. 
naturally being the oldest, I stepped into the role that was needed in my family that was missing, which was having a masculine leader and somebody to take care of things. And so I developed these qualities in myself, the things that I didn't have from not having a father around. And I became very independent, very like leading myself and being able to figure out how to solve problems so good to the point where I literally help people solve problems, like the deepest, most challenging problems <laughs> in the psyche for a living. <laughs> but, you know, I developed all of these things, which meant that I didn't trust my own feminine energy. In fact, I thought it was dangerous and really, really unsafe to feel and show and share my emotions and my desires. So I clamped all of that down. And that was great because I created a lot of success for myself until I realized that I wasn't happy. And everything I would do, I would eventually burn out because I wasn't really tapped into my true source of power. Well, everything came crashing down at the end of a toxic relationship when I realized I needed to let go of controlling things in my life. And I needed to tap into my heart and my emotions and my body and my feelings and my desires. I spent the last eight years of my life on this journey of unwinding all of these stories that made me hide who I really am and all of the things that made me feel like there was something wrong with me. And along that journey, of course, I'm always learning. But because I swung so far from one side to the other, I've been able to use that wisdom to help other people, women especially, who have been in similar situations as me, learn how to embrace their feminine energy. Balancing your masculine and feminine energies is absolutely so essential to having a beautiful, juicy, loving relationship doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, um, but I find especially women coming to me saying, how do I let go of control? How do I be more feminine? How do I save my relationship? And this is oftentimes the thing that has the highest return on your investment and your focus of your time and energy. I'm still learning every day, but when I had the realization that everything in my childhood and in my past was happening for me so that I could literally be doing what I'm doing right now, which is so incredibly fulfilling. I love helping people come back to the essence of who they truly are and letting that live in the world. There is nothing more fulfilling to me than that moment of liberating more of who you are and letting it live in your body and in the world. It's so incredible. And so it's like those moments of epiphanies or awakening moments when you have this sudden insight and I get to help facilitate that for people. So I love that. My spirit loves that. And I absolutely would not be here if it wasn't for the conditions that I grew up in. So when I realized that all of the things that happened in the past that I thought were bad were happening for me, I was able to integrate those experiences into my life. They no longer became something I was ashamed of. I just shined the light on those aspects and they became integrated inside of me. I'll never forget the day that this really clicked for me. I was sitting on the beach and it was a really gray day, cool, wet, beachy day. And I was sitting on a rock underneath the tree, keeping dry. And I had my journal and I was writing, but it was like the water was sometimes falling onto my page and the pen. I couldn't keep writing. I was getting so frustrated and I started crying and then it was getting worse on the page. And what I realized in my frustration was that I was literally just constantly trying to keep something at bay inside of me. I was trying to like constantly control and stop this thing from coming out but there I was on this rainy beach and I just finally let it out. And in processing that raw emotion, I realized that there was nothing wrong with me or my past. And in fact, it was so beautiful. And all of those things that I went through, as painful as they were at the time, I could see how they were happening for me to learn and grow. I stopped feeling angry and 
I stopped feeling like there was something that I needed to be ashamed of or hide about my past. And here's where it gets really good. So I think the very next day I went to a yoga class and I just immediately dropped into the splits. Like when we got to that portion of the class, I'd never done that in my entire life, but I could feel my hips just completely opening up and just this fear and tension and tightness that I had held on to my entire life, no matter how much yoga I was doing, had just completely vanished. It was just gone. My whole body just open and soft and open. And so, yeah, you can do yoga every day and that's amazing. And that can help to open your mind. But if you really want to open your body and your feeling body and be more connected to your emotions and your desires and your pleasure and you want the energy to flow in your body and in your life, we recommend you start with the story that is running in your mind. This is absolutely the quickest way to transform your life because the story you tell becomes the life you live. Where people get it wrong is they think, well, I'm in the mirror repeating affirmations. Why is it not working? <laughs> because it's not about trying to convince yourself. It's about diving into the depths of your psyche, into the places that are most hidden. Shadow work, as we call it. It's called shadow work because you can't see it. It's in the shadows. Until you know how to go in and find it, as I do with my clients, and then you can release it for good. And then you don't even need to repeat affirmations because what happens is you don't need to like convince yourself of something. Instead, what you're doing is you're removing these conditioned layers of things that are not you, like shame and guilt and fear and judgment and blame. And then you can just emerge like a beautiful blossoming flower. You are not a mind in a body. Your body is your subconscious mind manifested in the physical. And guess what? Our sexual experiences are the ones we hide the most. Our sexual experiences are some of the most triggering, traumatic, scary, blissful, spiritual, beautiful, empowering experiences that create such a strong reaction in the subconscious mind, aka the body. As you can imagine, when something is really painful, we disassociate with it. When we don't have the tools to process it and integrate it, we will become numb to the experience. We will disconnect and dissociate, which often means cutting yourself off from your body, okay? So if you're storing it in the subconscious mind, putting it somewhere where it won't be seen, hiding it in the shadows, guess what's happening to your body? You're numbing your body. You're not feeling what's going on. So how can you know how you feel? If you don't know how you feel, how can you know what you want? If you don't know what you really want, how are you going to make the right decisions for you in your life? If you're not making the right decisions for you in your life, that leads to disappointment, which also leads to resentment, which also leads to shitty relationships. Okay, trust me, I know I'm an expert on this from my own experience, and I've helped a lot of people through this. So we're really not that original when it comes to how we disconnect from our painful experiences. And the solution I have found is always the same. When you can change the story, you will change your life. So if you feel stuck in your head, insecure, overthinking things, or you're addicted to working hard and being a badass boss babe bitch, but you don't ever rest. All of this stuff is really trying to control things in your life. If you're obsessed with making a lot of money or achieving big goals constantly, but you don't take care of your body, or you're achieving things to try to get external validation, you know, most of the time, that's an unconscious pattern from your childhood of trying to get your parents' approval or your teacher's approval. If you have a hard time saying no and you are people-pleasing or you don't know how to use your voice to ask for what you want, all of these things are signs that you are disconnected 
from your body. There are things happening in your subconscious mind that have been too scary, or you just haven't had the support to process those things. We have memories from our childhood, from all of our past experiences, from all of our relationships, anything that has been a highly emotional state, if it's not processed in the moment, it will get stored in the body. This is why sexual healing is so powerful. And embodying who you really are means integrating your painful experiences, learning from them and understanding them so that you can write a new story for yourself. Like I said, these stories are the things that are the most hidden, the most feared, the most taboo, the least talked about in an overly sexualized culture. And I want to change that. So if you want to let go of control, trying to force yourself to let go of control is not the way to do it. You have to integrate these stories. If you want to embody more of your feminine essence, if you want to trust yourself and trust life and live in your body and know your desires and be confident to ask for what you want and to be clear and focused and on your path, then sexual healing is the way to go. Trust me. You will have amazing breakthroughs when you begin to integrate and rewrite some of these stories. I believe if more people were having deeply fulfilling, intimate sexual experiences, it would add immeasurably to world peace. I think we can do better. We certainly deserve better. And that's why I created my workshop, Orgasmic Existence. So this is a two hour workshop where you're going to be rewriting your story about who you are as a sexual being. All genders are welcome, all sexual preferences and orientations are welcome. It doesn't matter if you're single, coupled, or in a situationship, all are welcome. If you wanna lower your stress, anxiety, and feel more pleasure in your body, you gotta to come to this workshop. If you wanna feel sexually empowered and confident asking for what you want, You've got to be there. The subconscious mind gets in the way of people making the money that they want, having the sexual fulfillment that they want, and feeling powerful in their lives. But I know that true fulfillment, happiness, and true abundance is available to every single one of us if we just get out of our own way. And I have a very unique way of helping you to get out of your way very fast. So come to livingnarrative.com or click the link in the description below to come and discover your orgasmic existence. By deepening your relationship to your sexuality, you will naturally feel more at home in your skin and you will begin inhabiting your body instead of living primarily in your head where you just overthink things and stress out about stuff anyways. Naturally, you're gonna have better sex, but it's really going to improve all areas of your life. Let me know if you have any questions about the workshop or anything else related to sex, intimacy, and relationships in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.